Hey guys, good afternoon. I'm finally doing my long promised Prismacolor alcohol marker um, revisit. If you are interested in the original Prismacolor um, art marker showdown post, you should check out my blog. Um, the annotation right here will probably, well, definitely lead you to that post. Um, I think this is going to be primarily a video review just to save myself some time and energy. So, over the past year, I've been collecting Prismacolor markers in addition to my Copic and Blick Studio brush markers. And um, this is a collection in my art bin, which I reviewed here for you guys before. This is the collection I have. It's not a huge collection. It's really just meant to um, add colors to my Copic library that aren't necessarily available in Copic. Plus, I picked up some skin tones and some browns to, uh, in order to do a revisit test. I think pretty much everybody is familiar with Prismacolor markers by this point. They are non-refillable alcohol markers. They are sold at most art supply stores like Dick Blick, Plaza, Jerry's Artorama. Uh, you can even find them at Michael's or um, your own local art supply store will probably have Prismacolor markers in sets or in boxes. Originally, Prismacolor markers, like, and by originally, I mean when I was in high school 30 billion years ago, uh, originally Prismacolor markers came with this interesting triangular chisel nib, which is still, I mean, yeah, chisel nib, which is still one of the best chisel nibs on the market. So if you enjoy rendering with that side of the marker, Prismacolors are still a really good option. And um, the bullet nib. So these were the markers I learned how to use. Because um, Copics were just starting to come to America and they were very expensive and um, they weren't commonly available. Then, like three years ago, maybe a little bit more, Prismacolor introduced a double-sided marker that has a brush tip very similar to the brush tip on um, a Copic. And these are the blender markers that I pulled out so I could do a side-by-side -side comparison. And this is a Blick Studio marker. It's probably the newest of the bunch, but since I talk about it so much, I thought I would include it in the lineup. And while I'm here, I'm going to grab a, oh, that's their pro marker. I'm going to grab a Winsor Newton brush marker. So, as you can see, um, the Prismacolor brush marker is unique in that it has a bullet nib, whereas the rest, of the rest of these brush markers have chisel nibs. And what I would really like to see, and I'm probably never going to get it, is a Prismacolor that has this great brush tip. Oh, stupid me. There, now you guys can see what I'm doing. I didn't realize I was off camera. Sorry, so um, this is the bullet nib. These are the chisel nibs. What I'd really like to see one day is Prismacolor combine the best of both worlds and have this great brush nib and this phenomenal chisel nib on the same marker. But that is probably not going to happen. Price wise, the Prismacolor is comparable with Winsor Newton's brush marker or um, the Blick marker, especially if you can get it on sale. Uh, at around or under four dollars ish ish sometimes five sometimes four um, they are cheaper than the refillable Copic markers but they are not refillable and you can't replace the nibs and they don't sell ink refills for Prisma colors which I kind of wish they did because there's some colors I would love to have um, a liquid alcohol based ink available so these are the colors I currently own. As you can see, those are my my new acquisitions, my skin tones. And um, I'm going to write about this later, but 
since I have so many different brands of markers, I put them all in my Copic swatch book. And the way I do that is I apply some of the color on a sticker and I write the name and the color family and I just pop that into my Copic book so that when I'm buying markers, I know what I already own. And this is the piece that I'm going to be coloring for today's test. I inked it with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida brush pen. Sorry about that, my stuff's falling out. And um, if you check the annotation, it'll tell you where to get them, or you can check the description below this video. I'll have links to everything there. So I guess it's time to pull my markers and get started. Strangely enough, I found one I hadn't swatched, and that's Brick White. It's one of the older ones that had been given to me as a sample a few years ago. When I was at, at a show and the um, Prismacolor people were trying to drum up some business. And that marker was not not uh what's it called safe that's okay oh, sorry the case i have um it catches on these notches on the markers which are intended to keep the markers from rolling all over the place but it makes it very noisy and i prefer to pull my markers ahead of time and i guess what i'm going to do is i guess i'm going to pause this video and get back with you guys when I have picked my colors, because I'm finding all these colors that I thought I'd swatched, because they're new, and um, they're not really showing up. Ah, okay, I guess this is brick, and I'd put bright. No wonder that doesn't make any sense. Brick beige. But yeah, I'm gonna pick my colors and get back to you guys. Okay, so the colors I'm going to use, in order that I'm gonna use them, are almond milk, which is a very pale, almost white uh, skin tone, brick beige, which is what I thought was bright beige, um, oh, sorry about that, uh, ballet pink for the lips and the cheeks, um, light peach to add a little darker uh, tone to the lips and the cheeks, and then light tan for sh more shadows and um, the freckles. And I don't think I have a good purple. I don't know how I skipped that. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go with cool gray 30% for my shadows, which is going to be kind of, it's going to be pretty dark. Um, I would usually use like a blue violet, but I don't have any and I don't know how I neglected to do that. And yet I somehow have three ballet pinks. I think, I think I, um, I think I probably did order a violet and they may have grabbed the wrong one. So that seems really uncharacteristic of me. But since I don't know who, who made the mistake without checking my order, it very well could just be me having a massive brain fart. And I'm going to use the Prismacolor Colorless Blender and I'm going to try to get my camera in closer. I have to be really careful because my gooseneck stand keeps falling and I've replaced the, the foam on it, but that might not be good enough. So I'm going to try to keep these in the order that I had them and get started. Prismacolor markers are pretty juicy in terms of ink distribution, especially if you order them rather than buy them in store. I ordered my skin tones from Dick Blick because I just don't go to the art supply stores as often as um, 
I just don't go to them as often as I used to when I lived in Savannah. And uh, we don't have a Dick Blick in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, they're kind of my art store of choice, but, you know, if you don't have one, then you can't go there. But I've gotten a lot of my open stock markers when I was selecting to fill out my Copic collection. I got a lot of mine at Jerry's Artorama in Nashville and at Plaza in Nashville. So if you live in the area, those are two good places to check out. I really don't recommend getting them from Michaels because you have to call for assistance. And that kind of means knowing what markers you want to buy ahead of time since you're holding somebody up. by. They have, they're in a locked case and they have to unlock the case for you. So you can't just swatch markers or uh, see which markers you would like by testing them. And it also means, you know, you're not going to draw all over the shelves and you're not going to steal them. But as an adult, I prefer art stores that can trust me at least a little bit. And I need to pull out a little bit, speaking of, so you guys can better see. And um, the color is going down evenly. There's very little streaking because these markers are so juicy. But there is also very little ble uh, bleeding. I am picking up some like graphite smudged on my um, brush nib. That's not it's not really affecting the color, and that's more me than the the markers. So that's the first layer. Um, and I realized I didn't put down a color in the background, which I like to do sometimes. So I think I'm gonna go with celadon green, which is a nice um, like a nice gray green, kind of a, a muted color. And I'll apply it and then I will use the blending marker to kind of knock it back a little bit and I think I've done that for you guys before I should have done that first because sometimes all of that uh, solution on the paper can disrupt the, the skin tone or if you've applied other colors it can kind of affect that but this is early enough in the test that hopefully it shouldn't be a big deal And for those of you who are holding out for a blog post uh, about this, you will probably not get one. You're probably just going to get a link to the video. Because I've already partially reviewed these markers, although I know a lot of people check the blog um, for the Prismacolor review and the Shinhan Twin Touch review. So that's a pretty basic outline of the green. And that was Celadon Green. Um, so now I'm going to use the Colorless Blender to blend that out a bit. And I have to be honest, I don't think I have used a Copic Colorless Blender marker since before they introduced, I mean, I'm sorry, I mean a uh, Prismacolor Colorless Blender since before they introduced uh, their brush nibs. I think I quit using alcohol markers for a while in undergrad and then I started again in grad school with Copics and I by that time I my Prismacolor markers are those Prismacolor markers are dust in the wind I think they were given away to someone else I don't even know if I was the one who gave them away I think my mom did which is fine because once I've used, once I was introduced to the Copic Super Brush, there was just like no turning back. And like with most alcohol markers, um, you are not going to be able to blend out your color entirely. It just pushes the ink to the back of the paper and it can leave it kind of fuzzy looking. So um, if you're looking for sharp details, I really recommend you just apply a lighter color or you do tip to tip blending. And I think I've demonstrated tip to tip blending in um, video tutorials before so um, unless it comes up in this video I'm not going to demonstrate it but 
I may try to find a lighter green than Celadon and try and blend it out that way. Since this is just a test, it's not really a big deal. But I think the lightest green I have is mint cream. That might work. Yeah, there's mint cream. So that's almost as light as the blender marker, except that it's more yellow, which was kind of what I'd worried about, but that's okay, because when I apply it on top of the celadon green, hopefully it will, they'll mingle together and um, sort of blend okay. We'll see. And if you hear a lot of noise in the background, that's because my younger brother is staying with me. And I told him I needed to record the Prismacolor review real quick. And he wanted to watch. Because he was hanging out while I was um, doing annotation cards and links earlier today. We sort of started off by watching Lemia Crescent do a, um, a tutorial on using Crayola crayons for coloring. She did a, she does a phenomenal job. And uh, when I was editing my video, he thought I was watching another one of hers. I guess we sound kind of similar. Now, one of the problems with the brush of these markers is it is a, it can get a little bit dry and a little bit grabby, especially on thirsty papers like cardstocks or um, Bristol or mixed media paper, which is what I'm using here, and um, that can make the application a little more streaky, a little less predictable. That sort of uh, dried brush can also act, uh, can smear your ink. Or in my experience, it's smeared the ink. Like it's starting to smear a little bit on the Prisma that I'd written in the background. And that's just something to keep in mind. So that is an application of the mint cream, and I'm going to blend that one out. That one should blend out a lot better because it's much closer to white than Celadon was. And I'm just going to kind of soften it in places with the colorless blender. And I find that doing that gives these kind of markers, alcohol-based markers in general. Oh, see where it smeared the Prisma? Right there? Maybe you can't. It's very faint, and I'm probably going to go over it with another color. But um, anyway, going over selectively with a colorless blender to make some areas lighter than others, I find makes your alcohol markers look a little bit more like watercolors. So if that is an effect you're interested in, it's something to keep in mind. And I haven't got it down to an exact science. It's more of a feel thing. So... Um, Unfortunately, I can't, ne I mean, other than just you replicating my coloring style, which is fine by me, I can't necessarily guarantee that your results will be the same. Uh, and another thing I like to do is selectively darken some of the areas. That'll further blend out that celadon green. Uh, it'll also uh, darken the mint cream and just kind of push that watercolor sort of a look. As you can see, um, by applying colorless blender, like here, let's see if I can zoom in enough for you guys to see that. Here in Kara's bangs, the colorless blender has pushed the celadon green into her hair. So um, that's just something to keep in mind in terms of what order you do things in. There's definitely an order, I think, to using alcohol-based markers for best results. And you can play around with that order, but it, you know, your effects will vary.
Still, it looks cute and springish, despite me doing this at the very tail end of December. Winter is about to start in earnest, which I kind of dread. Last year, we had a really intense winter for Nashville. And I'm from Louisiana, so I know how to deal with heat. I know how to deal with humidity. But when it comes to cold, I'm... Oh, sorry. I forgot to pull back out. I'm so out of practice with this, you guys. You're going to have to bear with me. Um, I'm from Louisiana, so I can deal with all these other things. But cold is not one of the ones I like to deal with. So if you're a northern viewer, just be patient with me, I guess, while I whine about being iced in. We live on a hill and um, when it, I, I, I'm on like the downward slope of the hill and so when it ices it means my car will slip, can't get traction. And it, the, the street crosses another street um, at the bottom of the hill and that street has the right of way. So yeah, I think I think my northern viewers might be understanding my hesitance, my reluctance, maybe. Anyway, I'm going to go back over my skin tone, almond milk, with uh, more almond milk. And it certainly is an almond milk color. And I appreciate that naming compared to... Um, some of Copic's names, like their flesh pink is like this very, very pale pink. And I mean, you know, flesh comes in colors other than pale. I'm always excited when I, when marker companies offer good skin tones in a variety of colors. I know for most of my marker tests, I do Kara and she's very pale with freckles, but um, that's not the only characters I have, and it's not the only characters I would like to render. Um, when I was doing ProMarker uh, photography, I went back and I did another test, because I bought the skin tone set, and they have some good, well, they have some decent browns, so I ended up doing Naomi, Kara's friend. And as you can see, uh, almond milk is a very, very, very pale, like even paler than Kara is, to be honest, a very pale, um, sort of Caucasian skin color, or uh, option for Caucasian skin tones, and, um, I was basing my, pur I was purchasing online, so, you know, my color selection was not perfect, but even where you get some green, from the background, um, you can push that just using the ink in your marker. And smaller areas are much easier to fill in because it's less likely to dry out the brush and it's less likely to want to grab onto the paper and smear your ink. So. Unfortunately though, it is smearing the ink in her hand little bit more than Copics normally do and you know it might be because I didn't let this ink sit a full 24 hours I inked this last night and this is it's been I guess about 17 could be it I usually let my ink cure for 24 hours but I have friends who do con uh, conventions well I do them too but they do Copic commissions at cons and they only let their ink dry an hour and they don't have the smearing problems, but they are also inking with, uh, I think just like a Kure Take Fude Gokochi pen is also Copic resistance, but I, resistant, but I happen to prefer the, um, the Copic and water resistance of the Mitsuo Ida. So I'm adding in some pink blush tones using ballet pink. And I actually think the um, there the ink is dispersing more. I didn't let it dry uh, out before I put in the next layer because I like to have very blended transitions when it comes to the skin. But um, 
this is more more diffused than I normally like to work so I may let the skin dry and then come back to it and maybe blend some of it out with almond milk because some of the transitions are despite them being diffuse they're just kind of like this is huge her lip transition her lip shading is huge but you know it's one of the nice things about alcohol markers is that you can rework your area a lot so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back to it all right so that's been a few uh, that's dried for a few minutes so I'm going to go over the first layer of ballet pink with a little more pink kind of build up that color and I'm gonna adjust that camera again I've been I usually will just like pull the camera all over the place but I'm hesitant to hesitant to do so lately because um, my gooseneck clamp keeps falling it's it's a ch it's a cheap one and um, I should probably considering how much use it gets I should probably look into buying a nicer one and as you can see with Prismacolors you can build up the colors the same way you could or in a very similar way to how you would with Copics so I'm now going over with uh, brick beige which is one of the colors I used a lot when I was first learning how to use markers a billion years ago when I shared the earth with the dinosaurs um, and it's it's a pretty good basic Caucasian skin tone not too light not too dark uh, very useful serviceable color and um, you want to keep the color you had previously applied close by because you can use it to blend out transitions so they're not so harsh the problem with that is it might affect how your blush looks and if it does so that's a simple fix because you just reapply the blush and brick beige is kind of nice because it's a nice sort of neutral uh, color you know, um, a lot of peaches tend to be very hot, very saturated. Um, but brick beige is kind of a true skin tone, right? There's like a little bit of blue and it looks like a little bit of red in there. So it just looks more realistic. And I'm actually glad I bought it because I think there was a hole in my um, Copic collection that brick beige will fill nicely. So that was good on my part and like I said anywhere that looks kind of dark you can blend it out a little bit with the color you previously used in this case almond milk so I and just applying a first layer of shadow and blending it out and I wish I had something that worked in between brick beige and uh, almond milk because there is kind of a, a big difference between the two colors um, and it would be a lot easier to bla blade blend if I had that like transition color I like working in um, like triads of color that's not a big deal that's my own fault and Prismacolor does sell a portrait set I had considered buying the portrait set but the portrait set actually had a lot of the Prismacolors I already have in my collection and I don't really like duplicates I don't like spending money on duplicates so I opted not to get the portrait set and I sort of just built my own So that's the brick beige and the almond milk sort of blended out together. So I'm going to go back again with ballet pink. Keep working that blush. Keep building it up.
keep picking up ink on my nibs, which I'm not happy about, but I don't necessarily think that's a Prismacolor issue. So, um, the thing about Prismacolors is, unlike Copics, they're going to push the ink a little bit more, push the dye a little bit more than Copics do. So, uh, you know, it, it tends to gray out the transitions a little bit more. So, gotta keep building those colors up. Because contrast is where you get visual interest. So you want to have areas of light and areas of dark. And this is looking so nice and so pink, it really makes me want to not use the cool gray I picked out as the shade. I thought the cool gray would work with the green, but kind of having my doubts. So, so far, they perform pretty similarly to Copics, a little bit juicier than Copics, um, a little more uh, prone to bleeding than Copics. And if you do get areas of bleeding, you can push the color back using the colorless blender, or you can just hold out until you're applying that color and see how it goes, because um, any color you apply on top will probably push it back anyway. And let's see how the peach. Peach is kind of intense for a, um, like a, a pink kind of color. So now I'm gonna dive into the land of regret and use my cool gray, probably very selectively. I can't believe I didn't buy a, um, a light blue. It's usually violet and light blue are two of the colors I usually always make sure I get. I'm trying to have a very light hand here because this cool gray is um, much darker and less saturated than the colors I'm putting it on. So it could have a tendency to make everything look very muddy really quickly. Um, I think though, I think the this kind of judicious use is working really well though. Just very faint amounts of cool gray. And the last color I have is light tan, which is a darker light tan than Copic's actual tan. I'm just going to use it in the shadows very lightly, light hand here. Mostly on top of that cool gray, not to get rid of that cool gray because I like the cool gray, um, but just to kind of push the shadows, um, add a little bit of saturation where applicable. And then I'm going to use it to add freckles. Very light tan because this brush is very juicy and is prone to over application. And then I'm gonna have to clean up her eye there because there was some bleeding into her eye. And I might cheat and grab a Copic light blue just to add the shadow to her eye since I don't have one for Prisma. But as you can see, they handle very similarly to Copics. So if Prisma is your only, is well, Prisma is a good only option. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah, wow, well, that's not the worst that could happen. Uh, but if if you don't, if you want to get into alcohol markers, and um, you're not really sure, and the store you have access to has Copics and Prismas and that's it or you're not allowed to order online or whatever 
right? Let's see, your options are limited, is the TLDR. Um, Prismas are great, um, and they're a very, very similar to Copics in a lot of ways. Copics are not the end-all be-all. They're just one of the many great options you have. <laughs> it sounds like I'm doing my in pitch when really I'm just chatting, sorry. You know, I might use that cool gray and then, hmm, I think I'd really rather just grab that blue though. Um, anyway, Prismas are great. There's nothing wrong with using Prisma colors. So cheating a little bit, here's Copic. Just to add some light blue for shading in her eyes. And I gotta pull out my big old bin again. It's actually getting to the point where I'm sort of wondering if I'm gonna have to buy another art bin because this one is pretty dang full. And I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup and pick up the colors I'm not using right now. That way they're not just sitting out, taking up space, confusing me with what I have and haven't used. And I apologize for the racket. It's just me putting them away. that I should have. I wonder what I put in the wrong place. The problem with the art bin tray is it's a little bit deceptive in that you have um, four per tray fewer spaces than you should have. Uh, that's to make room for the, um, dang it, there's just like no good place to put it. I'll put it right, oh I know why, it's because I put the cool blue, cool gray in its spot. See, not thinking. And I'm kind of wasting y'all's time by <laughs> chatting and not having it where you can see it. It's a little bit better. So now I'm going to pick... Oh, that's my belt. You can tell I'm a little bit out of practice. I'm going to pick the colors for her eyes. And I mean, she has Canon eye colors. So walnut is a close enough match. Sienna brown is good. Uh, Sienna brown light tan and walnut would work well as like a skin tone triad for somebody with um, a darker skin. It would be like a nice, rich, uh, darker skin tone. Eggplant is good too, um, but it is a little bit darker than what I need. Mocha light seems, I mean, that could be good. Uh, these two light umbers and mocha dark could be um, a nice, oh, sorry, I'm hungry, triad for, um, Again, a darker skin tone, maybe like a, a darker Hispanic skin tone. Uh, I think it's a little bit desaturated. I would prefer something a little more saturated, but I know there are um, skin tones that are uh, more de more desaturated. So my personal preference notwithstanding, walnut, eggplant, and maybe cocoa bean. But they really, I think, have um, a good selection. Prismacolor has a good selection of usable skin tones and a variety of shades. So if you're kind of unhappy with what Copic has to offer in terms of skin tone variety, uh, Prismacolor has you covered. I think I will add the white highlights after with like an opaque white pen. So I use kind of a delicate hand because these are very juicy and I don't want them bleeding into the skin. And Prismacolor has a lot of colors to choose from, although the new brush markers um, are a little more limited in what you can get, so, I mean, I, I'd have to look up the numbers, 
I know they're on that original pose, but they also introduce new colors every year, uh, very similar to how Copic does. So, um, you know, if, if they're missing a color you need, it might even be worth it to write to them uh, and request that they consider adding that color to their roster. I mean, uh, Copic America, their reps are pretty responsive, but I don't know that they really get a lot of say in what colors come out. I'm pretty sure Prismacolor is made in the U.S., or um, if not made, it's like home base is in the U.S., but I'd have to double check because it was bought by Stanford recent, or not recently, many, many years ago. But that does change things when you're, you're bought. So the brush is also very nice for doing like highlights, shine on the hair. That's something I wouldn't have been able to do with a bullet nib. And I got just ever so slightly outside of her eye. Kind of looks like a freckle though. We'll go with freckle, straight freckle. So um, that's another reason why you might want the brush markers. It makes it so easy to do hair. And those of you who sat through the, um, the, the Winsor & Newton pigment marker videos where I was just grousing and grousing and grousing about the lack of brush, you know I'm very much brush biased. I think it makes it so much easier to color in spaces. And you can really tell how well um, Prismacolor layers how well one color will layer onto itself to build up um, saturation and like richness. That's something good. There are definitely brands where you can't, you just can't do that. Okay, so if you want um, kind of striking layer effects in the hair, you need to wait and let the alcohol evaporate out. So, um, you know, it's not blending into itself as much. I'm going to grab a dark red and do the inside of her mouth with henna. Henna's a pretty color. This is one of the reds. Um, you know what I'm going to do the bullet nib? This is one of the reds that's not really available in Copic. It's a nice, rich red and uh, I don't have too too many of them but yellows and oranges are also areas where Prismacolor does really well so that's eggplant and eggplant is kind of a purple brown which is fine by me because I think that is a lovely dark skin tone. When I'm complaining about um, markers that don't, brands that don't necessarily have good darker skin tones, what they tend to have is they tend to either have very desaturated darker browns, which don't necessarily work so well because then people start looking like zombies a little bit, or they have, um, like, all of their browns are, like, saddle browns, very orangey browns. Um, so, you know, it's nice when a company has nice dark browns. And I don't necessarily understand why it would be difficult to offer a nice selection of dark browns, um, but you know, some companies have trouble with, with that. Prismacolor is not one of them. Prismacolor has nice browns, although these the browns are a little bit darker than what I would normally do for Kara's hair, to the point where I think I'm going to skip cocoa bean, because cocoa bean is a very rich dark brown, and it's much darker than what I actually need. So now 
we need to decide on, um, I'll just go ahead and do the flowers real quick. And they're based off of these little purple and yellow flowers that we get in, in Louisiana in the spring. I guess they're just like common lawn daisies. And the purple is actually too dark. It's Parma violet, and I really need a violet violet. I need a lighter color than that. But I don't have one in Prismacolor, and this is a Prismacolor review. And yeah, I totally did cheat on the eyes. I'm not going to cheat on everything. Oh, pop that in the wrong spot. Let me fix that. And then I need to decide on what colors her outfit's going to be. Um, and I might, I might make it like, um, shades of red or something. Yeah, purple's too dark, but that's okay. Too dark for the actual flowers, which are like, um, a gray violet. They're cute. I mean, a gray lavender. They're cute. Little roadside flowers. Sort of thing found in everybody's yard. Kind of flowers that people don't even realize are growing there because they're so little and unobtrusive. to be the flowers I like. The ones that just show up every spring and do their job. You don't have to plant them or baby them. In Nashville, crocuses are native, so you'll see crocuses growing in people's yards sometimes, which to me is so cool because a crocus is like a fancy flower. Trying to push some of that purple, just a little bit, you know, just lighten it up a bit, because it's so it's so dark. Don't really want to do any tip to tip blending, but some of these areas are looking naked. Not that there's anything wrong with tip-to-tip -tip blending, it's just a pain in my butt. Not my favorite thing to do. I need to pull on the camera. There we go. So, I think I might... What color is this? Tuscan red. Maybe Tuscan red and flagstone red for her outfit. Like the Lederhosen kind of shorts. And I'm applying the lighter of the two shades first. And then I'm going to work it into a darker color. And then I still have to decide on her shirt. But as you can see, these are handling very well. They're <laughs> I feel like I'm like selling them. You guys probably know a lot about Prismacolor markers. All you probably want to know is, are they better than Copics? Which one should I buy? And the answer is... There is no answer. <laughs> the answers are both great, but they're great in different ways. And um, I think there's room in your collection for both. The Copics will last you a long time, but if you don't have access to the ink refills and the nibs, and a lot of, um, if you live in kind of like a rural area, you might not have access to those things without ordering them. Um, then they're going to be expensive markers that you can't refill. And um, if that's what it looks like, if you don't think you can get a hold of those various inks or the replacement nibs, then look, to be honest, you should probably be buying Prismacolor markers because they're less expensive and they are not meant to be refilled and they're not meant to be to have replaceable parts. So, you know, they're going to cost you less 
but if you live in an area where you can get the refills, um, you live near an art supply store, you don't mind ordering things online, um, I would start out with Copics, that's personally, and then I would um, start collecting Prismacolors for the Copic colors you can't find. If you, um, if your focus is on people, a variety of skin tones, um, I think Prismacolor has a lot of great darker skin tones, and I guess I'm going to need to do like a focus on that, for, both for you guys and for myself, so I can be able to make recommendations for colors. Um, I think Prismacolor has good darker skin tones, I think Copic has good lighter skin tones. Whatever you get, I don't want you to think you're trapped into only buying that brand. Um, you know, I know on YouTube, a lot of us display, when we show off our collections, we display them sorted by brand, like Copics all together. Um, and for some people, it's because that's the, that's what your container facilitates. Like, um, I have a set of, I have several sets of drawers from the container store and I keep my Copics and my Blick markers in there because they're the same size. So they'll fit in there and I keep my, nowadays I keep my Prismacolors and the few Mexby I have and my um, Shinhan Twin Touches in another case under the table and it's not because I'm ashamed of them because I think they look great. It's just there's no room on the table. Um, but I think a mixed collection of markers is going to give you the best range, you know, if you're not tied to one brand. And I'm sure I'm going to get a couple comments saying that Prismacolor markers are refillable. And um, there are tutorials online for injecting your Prismacolors with um, rubbing alcohol to extend their color. And uh, that's okay if it's completely dry out because you're going to be throwing it away anyway. The color you're going to get is going to be much lighter, but that could be really useful for you, you know? Um, so there is some validity, perhaps, in doing that. I haven't done it. I don't know if I'm going to do it because, um, you know, I don't know when the last time I went through a Prismacolor marker all the way till it was totally dried out was. Um, and some people also say you can refill them with Copic Various Inks, but for the kind of collection I have, if I'm going to do that, then I already have the Prismacolor, I mean, I already have the Copic of that color, you know? I don't need to refill my, my Prismacolors with my Copic colors. And like I said uh, before, I'm fine with the fact that prism colors aren't refillable because I mean, you know, they are their own marker. They're not a Copic wannabe. And I use both brands really regularly, especially now that I'm doing, um, I'm recording. And I try to grab for both equally because I think both brands have a lot to offer. I think both brands are very important. Important, valid. Oh, what's the word I'm even looking for? I'm just adding a little shadow with that cool blue that I very... Uh, sparingly used on Kara's skin and face. It's actually a pretty good cool blue.
So that leaves us with the bridge of her lederhosen and her shirt and her socks and her boots. I think I'm going to go ahead and do her boots. And I'm going to do them in eggplant and I think I'm going to go ahead and use cocoa beans. That way I can show you guys how good they look together. As a not spokeswoman for either brand, as an independent reviewer, I mean, they're both good alcohol base markers. Especially since Prismacolor has the brush. The brush is a little bit grabby, but that's not, you know, that's not the end of the world. They do some colors better than Copic. Copic does some colors a little bit better than Prismacolor. Oh man, maybe I want to do greens, but those are going to look Christmassy. <sighs> Brittany Blue, maybe? Or Muted Turquoise and Brittany Blue? If you can hear that, they're watching something downstairs. They're, I'm actually the hold up. We're going to go to McKay's, which is a used bookstore that I really like around here. Um, and nobody was ready. I was ready to go and no one else was. So I was like, all right, fine, I'll finish the video. <laughs> and I think, y'all know how it is when you get into something. You don't want to just like put it aside. You're like, I'm going to finish it. And then, you know. I don't have to worry about coming back to it when I get home. This is muted turquoise, and um, it is very muted for turquoise, right? Like, I wouldn't call this a turquoise. I would call it a blue-gray, but it's a nice color. I think I was hoping for um, just a more turquoise-y color, because... That's kind of one of the holes in my Copic collection. And you know, I'm a butthole and I don't always swatch before I buy and I buy online a lot. So I'm going off digital swatches. So I could actually have my swatch book in front of me if I'm buying online and actively try, <laughs> trying to get colors I don't own, colors that aren't already represented in my collection. And, uh, you know, digital swatches and real physical swatches on paper, or even just who's taking the photo, where they're taking it, can make a big difference. So, you know, that's just like a word of caution when you're buying colors online. And now I'm using Brittany Blue. better and I'm kind of working wet into wet so it'll diffuse more look more um, more blended without actually having to do a lot of blending back and forth if you want a more striking shadow a more obvious shadow you need to let it dry and then go back into it. I'm going to be a cheater cheater pumpkin eater again and grab that light blue from Copic because I don't have any in Prismacolor. Not they don't have any. I don't have any because I want this to be white. That part on her bib. So you guys, this will probably not go live until after this has occurred, but uh, my sketch box came
came in. And that's a subscription I'd purchased for myself. Um, and my art snacks hasn't come in. And that's a subscription that my mom purchased as one of my Christmas presents. Or as my Christmas present because she got me a year sub. Um, and I want to do a side-by-side -side review. And it's killing me because... I'm waiting on one of them, and other people are unboxing their their snack sketch boxes, and I am actively trying not to see what's in it because I want to be surprised. This orange might not work. This is Spanish orange, and it's a really good orange that is not really represented in Copic. I'm actually going to go with yellow. Yellow ochre. Oh well, yeah, it's a good yellow ochre too. Kind of bright that. I'll put that to the side. I'm gonna need something to help me shade. Belt buckles and such. Just want that art snacks to arrive so I can quickly unbox it and get the post up it's not the only reason why I mean I've you know I've been waiting for like a month two months because I ordered late November for my sketch box and I've been waiting on that and I'm waiting on art snacks now but I mean it's like kind of waiting because I'm excited about it eager to see what I got sent I hope it's good. I hope it's not stuff I have already reviewed. And I hope you all like it. I hope you all like it so much that you just have to subscribe to my Patreon because you just have to see more because it's going to end up going up behind a wow. Because I have bills to pay. So, other than white highlights, I guess should do that Prisma, shouldn't I? What am I going to do? This magenta, which isn't even a magenta, it's a, where's magenta? It's like a very nice rosy pink, it goes well with henna, but it's not a magenta. This is closer to magenta in my opinion, um, but they're nice, they're nice colors. So, other than adding white highlights, that's, that's Prismacolor. Um, I enjoyed using them. I had no major complaints. They didn't give me any um, big problems other than being a little bit dry when you apply a lot of it and um, a little bit too juicy so that they tend to be a little bleedy. Um, neither of those are the biggest deal in the world though. Just thinking about what I want to use as my as my opaque white. And this is an opaque white um, marking pen from Michaels, and it's really not. I bought it to like review, and I don't know that I ever got around to the review, but I like it. So that doesn't really matter a whole lot because you can build up opacity with it. Oh yeah, I can go over that purple and knock it back a little. Can you guys see? Maybe not. Let's knock some of that purple back so it's not so intense. Maybe add some white there and some white there. And um See, once I start this, it's like hard to get me away from it. Really, a, a good opaque white marker, like this one, which is from Mar Ugh, Michaels, and it's made by Recollections. Um, a good opaque white marker is a great addition if you enjoy using uh, alcohol markers or even water-based markers because it will help you put back in details that you've lost 
is a little sticky when it's drying, so keep that in mind. But it's not the end of the world. You can knock back in some contrast. I talked, I think I did a video about making like an opaque white kit with you guys. Um, I'm still working on mine. I like what I have, but I mean, you know, I'm always, when it comes to art supplies, I'm always looking. Here's a white Signo. It is way less opaque, or it's way more opaque than that white uh, Recollections pin. So I'm going to fix Kara's teeth because they got kind of kind of boo -booed. Add some highlights on the metal of her, oh, always me with the, but I gotta quit now because A, I'm hungry, and B, I'm overworking it. I am gonna, once that Signo dries, I wanna fix her lip line, but other than it looking very anime desu because of all the sparkles in the eyes, uh, I think I'm done with it, and I think that's my Prismacolor field test review in a nutshell. Um, if you guys found it helpful, if you enjoyed my video, if you enjoy what I do in general, and you are not yet a reader of my blog, you should go check it out. It's Natto Soup, N A T T O S O U P, same as my YouTube username, nattosoup.blogspot.com. Um, there's like it's five years worth of art supply reviews. There's six to seven years worth of art supply, I mean, art tutorials and um, my process as an artist, me growing and changing as an artist. So if that's something you're interested in, you should definitely check it out. Um, you should also consider liking this video. That lets YouTube know that you want to see more of my content in your feed. And you should also consider subscribing because I am going to be producing lots of art content. If you have any questions or if there's ever a tutorial you're interested in, I would really appreciate it if you left me a comment or even if you just wanted to say hi or thanks or point out something I'm wrong about. My only caveat is if you're going to tell me I'm wrong, you need to show me some sort of evidence. Um, I've had several people telling me that the Blick Studio markers are refillable. And uh, you guys might say so, and you guys might be using rubbing alcohol or colorless blender in them, but that doesn't mean they're meant to be refilled. So if you can prove it, I will amend my content to reflect that and give you credit. Um, so that was that, and this is me. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys have a great day. Goodbye.